when they failed, like David, when he, the times he failed besides, you know, the big, big deal ones, like, you know, going around and killing somebody and taking his wife, but that's real big. <laughs> but when he, when he didn't seek the Lord, things fell apart. Yeah. Things fell apart. So we can learn from them things. So anytime we need help, we go seek the Lord and ask Him. We ask yeah. Him for anything. He's going, he said everything pertaining to life and godliness. That's everything. <clears throat> now, that's what I do. I hold on. And I resist him. And he, he does flee. He does flee. Mm -hmm. Now, the Lord... Oh yeah, I wanted to mention something about something earlier. When I was talking... This is interesting. This guy I worked with, he, uh, he's a minister. And he's a, a friend of mine. I'm not going to name names because, I mean, he might watch, but he hasn't watched one yet. Mm -hmm. sermon. But he, um, he actually came to me one night and he was like, all oh, excited. He's like, oh, I can't, yeah, I'm going to tell you something. I, I watched his sermon, and it was great. And he said he had the victory over sin, right? This guy, he, what he did, I told you just what this guy said. He says that he wrote stuff on a piece of paper and stomped on it, and oh, now he had the victory. This is what he said. It was great. It was exciting. I said, he should have seen his face. This is what I said. I couldn't help it. I says, man, I said, I won't do nothing. I said, what are you talking about? And I couldn't help it. It just popped out. And I was like, I said, that's just symbolic. I said, I said, all you, you got to have your faith in Jesus for anything. Amen. Amen. And then he first said his face all dropped. And I said that first, I was like, oh, I need to do that to him. But then he was like, all right, all right. And this guy's been a minister for a while. And it makes you think. A lot of, a lot of pastors and a lot of preachers out there, they're, they're looking everywhere else besides the one. Yeah. Amen. The one who did it. Yes. Jesus did everything yes. at the cross. Yes. It, it, so that, that's like, that baffles my mind, but, yes. but it's just the devil. They, they're, they're even trying to blind the preachers. They're blinding the pastors. They're blinding, it's blinding their minds. And so it's like, wow, I had to bring that up because I, I was thinking about it. But yeah, he actually thought that was amazing. He liked it because it's something that we do. See, the flesh yeah. likes what we can do. That we can do it. I know I can do this right now myself. I ain't got to run nobody. But see, that's the point. That's, that's what a lot of people are taught. They're taught to rely on themselves from the young child. You gotta, but see, that's, that's when we have to relearn once we're born again. And that's why it's a struggle for a lot of people. Because they have to then yield and give up themselves. So just like Jesus gave up his self for us, on the we got to give up ourselves Talk and right. take up his cross mm -hmm. yield to him yes <clears throat> now now that I lost my place oh. <laughs> now now this is what the Lord had spoke to my heart as I was writing this and I had to have confirmation about it before <laughs> I said it and I was like Lord are you sure this is what you want me to say and then the Holy Spirit fell and I'm like well maybe it's myself and I was like, Lord, is this is what you want me to say? And then the Holy Spirit fell again. And I did it three times. I know I, should, I was doubting myself. I wasn't doubting him. And so uh, this is what the Lord said to me in my heart. I didn't hear, hear no audible voice or nothing. But he said, what this is here is that, it's, this is the word that fell in my heart. He goes, that this is called activating the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. And that this is the way we crucify the flesh and all its lusts. Now I'm giving you what the Lord revealed to me. I truly believe it's the only way we can completely have total victory of the world of flesh and the devil. So you can walk with God having a pure heart and clean hands. So I you gave it to me, I gave it to you. And I think how great and wonderful. Our God is. And I just want to praise Him. I just want to praise Him. Now, I often looked at the sky, especially in the mornings. I look at it often, actually. And I see, like, the purplish, um, pinkish hue to them. And I think of the book of Nahum. In the book of Nahum, um, he was praising the Lord and said that the clouds are the dust of His feet. I thought that was beautiful. The clouds are the dust of His feet. And I, I look at him and I say, Lord, even those clouds are beautiful from your feet. The dust of your feet is beautiful. And I, then I think about the other scripture that's in Psalms talking about the earth is God's footstool. So it's him just kicking up his feet on the earth. 
I mean, that's how great our God is. That's the things I think about. And I just wanted to share that with you. And, and that makes me think when he does that and you see all these things around us, that God has everything under control. Amen. And it's like, the thing about it is, is that when we start doubting, we shouldn't. We start pouting like I have. We shouldn't. Because our God has everything under control. It's just such a beautiful yeah. thing. Our faith in our God, what He has done here, our salvation is so perfect. It's so wonderful. Now, <clears throat> now it's so perfect, I think, what I, what I call it is, to myself, and not very often I call it to say it to people, but I'm saying it to you now. I call it, it's so perfect, I call it the master plan of the Godhead in Christ Jesus. Because that's exactly what it is. It's the master plan. There's no better plan than that. Mm -hmm. Now, that's where all of mankind's problems are answered at. Everything is answered. Everything. And it's so perfect that when he did what he did at the cross, he answered everything for man, defeated the devil, everything's under his feet. I mean, it's, it's gradually, it's going to be, I mean, to my, in the God's mind, it's under his feet now. Yeah. Eventually, all the devil and everything that's evil is going to be all in the lake of fire. And so, in, in reality, once it was before the even foundation of the world, it's been done. It's beautiful. And there's no better plan than God's plan. Amen? Amen. Now, that's, like I said, that's everything. Everything pertains to life and godliness. It leaves nothing out. So if somebody says that you need to go to a psychologist, that's a lie from hell. If anybody's telling you that the, the sin problem it is going to uh, ripping up pieces of paper and burning them, that's a lie from hell. Everything is in Jesus. Everything is in Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, all because of the Lord's victory at the cross, the cross <clears throat> we have, all we have to do, this is all we have to do is receive them is by faith and believing in Him. That's the simplicity of the cross. Now, that, that's how perfect God's plan is. People don't even understand. Well, there's got to be more to it. There's got to be more. It can't be just that simple with believing in Him. That's His plan. Mm. It's, it's, this is what happens. It says, also, then we believe and then we abide in Him by keeping our faith in Him and that's what it says. This one I'll read very quickly. Um, it says here in John chapter five, 15, verses 4 through 8. This is John chapter 15, 4 through 8. This is what it says about abiding in Him. This is what happens when we do it. Abide in Him, abiding me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more yet can you expect you abide in me. So we have to abide in Lord in order to bear any fruit at all. That's by faith, of course. I am the vine and you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit. Mm -hmm. Without me, you could do nothing. Right there is plain and simple. Without Jesus, you can do nothing. Mm -hmm. right. If a man abide in me, he, if he, excuse me, if a man not abide in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered and men gather them together and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, then you should ask what you will, and it should be done unto you. That's another promise. Herein is my Father glorified as you bear much fruit. So if we abide in Jesus, by our faith, what's going to happen? The Holy Spirit's going to go to work on us, and we're going to have a want to. A want to, to share the word. That's right. Because we love the Lord so much and we have a great relationship with Him, we want others to also have a great relationship with Him. Because we were thinking about, what I think about it is, now this is the way I think about it, how, I, I know I love the Lord. So if, if, if I know my relationship, how wonderful it is, how great it is, I'm going to want that other person to have the same relationship. Mm -hmm. So that, that's how you share your love with somebody else, by giving them Jesus. And they might not accept Him, but at least you're trying to. So in closing, if we are in Christ and are abiding in Him by faith in what He did for us at the cross, we will have freedom in sin and produce much fruit 
to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And if we don't, we will wither and we'll be cast into the fire. Let us not be cast into the fire. Amen. Let's abide in Him. Please stand if you're able and every eye closed and every head bowed. Now, I asked, Father, I asked you that you, what you gave to me, that you please give on to them, that their hearts are open to it. And that they receive the revelation knowledge and that the awakening happens in their soul. Now, if by chance anybody by way of internet does not know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, I would say this prayer after me, and I'm asking all of you to sit here with me. Dear Heavenly Father, Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you. I come to you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I ask you, Lord. I ask you, Lord. To come into my heart. Come into my heart. To save my soul. Save my soul. Make me whole. And make me whole. I am sorry. I am sorry. For the way I've lived. For the way I've lived. The things I have done. The things I have done. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. And I believe. And I believe that Jesus died. That Jesus died on the cross, so I can have forgiveness. So I can have forgiveness of my sins. Of my sins. And I believe, Father. And I believe, Father, that you rose him from the dead. That you rose him from the dead. And I confess the Lord Jesus. And I confess the Lord Jesus. And ask him to be the Lord of my life. And ask him to be the Lord of my life. And I thank you for saving my soul. And I thank you for saving my soul. Amen and amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you, God. Amen. You too. Good job. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Beautiful to see how the Lord uses His people. Amen. Amen. That have a hunger and thirst after God's righteousness to share the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you and keep you.